working with environment variables has been broken for years. So Astro in their latest update just fixed environment variables all together. Let's check it out. So let's start with the general idea of environment variables. Now for years, we had to rely on the .env package. So this is something you'd have to add to your project to run locally. And then with this package locally, you could create the actual .env file and then access those properties inside of your project using process.env after you require and run the config for this plugin. And then when you deploy your application to Netlify, Vercel, AWS, et cetera, you'd actually have that environment variable stored in one of those dashboards and you'd have access to it on process.env. Now with Vite, this has changed in the last couple of years of how we actually access these variables. And so what it has become is accessing these at import.meta.env. And if you look at Astro environment variables, this is actually how you access them before this new experimental feature. So you can see in here, you have some default environment variables, but basically you're gonna access these at import.meta.env uh, and then whatever the name of that is. Now, the problems with this is you have no validation of what these properties are, the types, you have no validation of do these environment variables actually exist or not. And so you don't know if they're there until you actually run your code. So this has been something that has been a problem for years since the beginning. Now there is something in the next, uh, next ecosystem that I did find, which is T3 dash ENV. Now this is from Theo and this is actually what I'm using in one of my recent projects deals for devs at deals for devs.com and gives you the ability to define your Zod schema uh, for your environment variables in Next.js. But Astro now has this fix and it's baked into the framework. So this is with Astro 4.10. I'm actually confused how 4.1 and 4.10 are different. I mean, I guess that makes sense, but it feels weird. Anyway, so a couple of features in here. Uh, I'm gonna talk more about um, the server stuff in another video, so keep an eye out for that. But this is the experimental Astro uh, ENV module where you can define and access your environment variable. So it talks about the different use cases. Some of them you need to access in the client, some only on the server. Some are secrets, things like API keys. You don't want them exposed in the client nor inlined in the server build. This was something I got hung up on a little bit um, because I, I don't think that's exactly what happens. So I'm, I'm not exactly sure how that fits in, but uh, some variables are required for your app to function at all, whereas others are optional. That's another thing. Uh, that we've kind of struggled with in deals for devs is which ones are actually required versus which ones do people just need to get started. Uh, so then there's some different APIs based on the runtime that you're in to get them. Anyway, what happens is you define uh, inside of your Astro config, you can now set up uh, the experimental configuration for ENV and then inside of here, define your schema. So you can say, uh, these are the two properties that I'm gonna have, API port and public dashboard V2. Now remember in Vite for something to be accessible or in Astro because it uses Vite for something to be accessible, you're gonna have to uh, denote this with public dash to be able to access that um, in, the, in the client. Interesting example here that they talk about the context being server instead of client. So for each one of these, you define the type here. So instead of having to convert a raw string to a number or a Boolean, you actually have properties here or functions here to call for that configuration. Then you can tell it where you're gonna access it, uh, what sort of access should you have, and then uh, if there is a default value, which is pretty cool. So inside of here, they also show that you have a function called get secret. Now I asked inside of the Astro Discord why this function exists, because I didn't really understand. Like if I have a secret that's on the server, why would I not just like imp uh, include it this way? And so what this get secret function is, is if you need to kind of programmatically figure out what an environment variable is. So for example, if you didn't know what this key is, you could pass in a key from something that you looked up in the database or something and then call get secret on that. Now for me personally, I don't think I have a need for that. So I would just import my variables directly from ENV uh, server. And then on the uh, client side, same kind of thing, you could just import this thing right here. Now actually, that I see this, I have one question that I don't know the answer to, is do you actually have to have the public prefix to access this property uh, in the client? I'm guessing no now, although above they reference uh, public dashboard v2. So I'm not exactly sure how they're differentiating, differentiating uh, that anyway. Uh, so yeah, this is defined. This is, they have another example here for get secret of reading something 
that is not defined in your schema. So again, you're taking in some sort of dynamic property and this is dynamic server one to whatever that number is and being able to do it. So anyway, I think this is pretty neat. This like game changes how we do environment variables and it's baked into the framework and it's pretty amazing. So I thought I would go through and run this on, uh, on one of my recent sites. So what I'm going to do is run this upgrade. I'm just going to test this out live. So this is the astrocourse.dev uh, site. I'm going to do this on the main branch because it's just a project with me and I can just kind of wing it. So we'll go ahead and upgrade uh, Astro. And then what we're going to do is open the Astro config, uh, config and have that ready to go. And then it's going to change all these packages. Hopefully all that stuff works out of the box. And then I am going to copy a snippet for my environment variables. So I'm going to copy this snippet and then we'll throw this in the config. Now, one thing I also had to do was update uh, Netlify since it got updated. It was importing from Netlify slash functions. Now it's just Netlify. So that's one thing I had to do. So these are uh, these are the properties that they have defined API port public dashboard v2. I'm going to go into my environment file and I deleted my API key for my database. I use this to track uh, coupon codes on my course. So I can check the coupon code on the server and then apply that to actually show the discounted page to the user. So I'm going to copy these and uh, just kind of paste them down here. And then we'll start to work on each one of these. So let's tab these over and then we can use multiple cursors if I get down here and then we'll start to work these out. So this will be envy field. And then we'll have all of these are going to be strings, I believe. And then we'll have context and we can choose. I'm going to choose by default client for everything. And then we'll come back and um, update this. So access is going to be also notice the IntelliSense for each one. And then we can have a default value as well. And then we'll come down and comma separate these. All right, cool. So let's go back and tailor these to what they actually should be. So for Zeta API key, this should be server and it should be secret. For the Zeta branch, it doesn't really matter, but we're only going to use it on the server. And then uh, it can, can be public because we don't, the branch is not something secret. That's one of the cool features of Zeta. They have branching built in. And the one thing that we do want to change is the newsletter ID is going to be a number. So we can go ahead and define that there. So if we were to run this, we should see it should work fine. And then we can do a search for uh, meta.env. And let's just go into uh, the API key, for example. So on the home page, let us try to import this. Let's see. This is from Astro ENV server. So let's just paste in this import. And let's see if we get IntelliSense in here for uh, the Zeta API key. Cool. So we can now get rid of import dot meta there that works. And then on the uh, coupon, we can do the same thing. So let's paste in the import and then we'll get the Zeta API key and the Zeta branch. And then we can go down here and get rid of import dot meta dot env. Now this should still work. So if we uh, run this localhost three uh, localhost going from Next.js land to Astro, 4321. Ah, it actually is throwing the air. Cool. So when we actually try to use this, it is throwing the air. Um, so because I had removed the API key, I'm going to add it back in and then we'll uh, rerun it to make sure this will work. All right. So I uh, just updated that, reran. Now let's see if we get it. Cool. And then what should happen is if we come down and add a coupon of JQQ, uh, well, I don't know what a student I think. Yes, JQQ or student JQQ courses, which is my student discount uh, that should now apply in that UI and then should also apply uh, inside of the pop up for Podia. So that seems to work well. Now I'm curious. I haven't checked this inside of Svelte. Let's make sure that we can do the same sort of import. So we'll import from this will be our client and it's recognizing that import. And then we want the public newsletter ID and the public newsletter subscriber. So, uh, so cool. So those both work and then we can get rid of the import dot meta as well. And we're not actually using the newsletter anymore because we already have the courses open. So we don't actually have the newsletter subscribe. So that should, uh, the code shouldn't be used, but it looks like it's getting picked up regardless. So we have our validation built in. It is working with the new schema definition. 
this is a game changer. This is exactly how environment variables should be. You should get IntelliSense. You should get types. You should know that those things are there and have the validation built in. You shouldn't have to build all that stuff from scratch. Anyway, this is super cool. Astro is my favorite framework in the world. The stuff they do is amazing. If you're interested in learning more about Astro and want to do a deeper dive course, uh, you can check out the course at astrocourse.dev. But let me know what you think. And if you've ever seen a better solution to handling environment variables than this, let me know in the comments below. Hope you enjoy the video and I'll catch you next time.